I just finished doing the review with Gio, and I just said to him afterwards, actually, I feel quite deflated after that, but not angry. And I don't know, it's not because I was resigned to it happening, uh, because I thought, you know, I thought we had every chance of beating Southampton, particularly when I saw the team, and particularly a sort of half, half strength, low strength, whatever, reserve Southampton team in the first half. I fancied our chances, so it wasn't, it wasn't that. But a lot of it's got to do with the Sevilla game coming up. And that's why I couldn't be angry. I'm not angry about it because I really do have one eye on that. I do wonder how many of the players have one eye on that. Even as much as David Moyes sent sent out the message into the players with his team selection by saying, you're my top guys, I want you to play really well on this. How many of them have got an eye on the Sevilla game? Not in a case of we're going to prove ourselves to show that we should be included in that team. But more a case of I just wonder. I just wonder if their focus is on that. It might not be much. It might be five. You know, just brings the performance level down by about five percent. Because again, they they looked to to not have that sort of mental vibrancy about them. I I think I do think the first half was decent. I think we got into the box loads, but really that initial ball up from four nails over to Bowen. I think sort of set the tone on that one. The Sevilla game is important and. The reason that I'm so focused on that is because it just comes around so infrequently. I mean, it really does. And it, for me, certainly, it's sort of dominating everything at the moment because it's it's pivotal in many ways, not just because it's the catalyst for if we beat them, we go forward and, you know, we go through into the quarterfinals. Clearly, that's that's an important occasion for, for any football club. But I mean, in terms of us looking back and it being a historical event for West Ham, and it will be because... I, I don't remember this ever happening, um, you know, in my lifetime. Not, not I can remember anyway. And it's a really big game. It's a big game against one of the European giants, the, the one of the best teams in this tournament. And I, and I can't, for that reason, it's disappointing to go out against Southampton. But I'm, I can't quite resign myself to what a lot of people were saying in the chat was, you know, sort of that's it. We're going to get thumped by Liverpool, and then uh, Sevilla going to knock us out of the. Um, of the Europa League, Look, they're favourites, all Liverpool favourites to beat us. I don't think I'm highly capable of losing against Liverpool, but just, there's just something. I've just got something about that Sevilla game, and I just wonder how much of this. I've got something in my mind, basically. That I don't know. I think we might. I, I think we might do a whole lot better than some are expecting. Let's put it that way. In terms of this game, the game we've just seen is frightening. How much we missed Aaron Cresswell? Absolutely frightening, really. To think at how much of our attacking play comes from a defender. When we played Wolves, it was thought it was a real feature to the game. Two main features that I noticed. One was the, the early press, to press their centre backs, gave them no time. The other one was as soon as we got the ball, there was crosses. The crosses would go in from both sides, Johnson and from Cresswell. Obviously, we didn't have that. So, number one, we didn't have the same pressing game against Southampton. And Yes, there were some crosses from Johnson. There were a couple more in the second half. But I think I only really noticed one one decent cross in the first half. And I'm not counting corners in this, by the way. So there just wasn't that supply there. You could see Moyes had done the instruction in terms of getting the ball forward and getting Suchek forward. Suchek seemed to have a more elevated role than Declan Rice did. But he had two scuffed shots, lazy shots, really. I must say lazy, I don't mean he couldn't be bothered, I don't know, just seemed, there wasn't a lot of power, not a lot of purchase there, and I don't know, he, he can shoot better than that, I remember him having long shots when he was having that really good season for us last season I mean, he made, he'd hit the shots with, with power, you know, so he, he's got shooting technique, it wasn't that, it just felt a little bit off and it was sort of quite symbolic of our overall display really, um, which was get to a certain point in that first half and, and not really have the cutting edge. But I think where it really showed up was in that second half when we needed a little bit more creativity. And I'm not blaming this at Diop. I hopefully listened to the review. I thought, I, you know, Diop, I gave Diop my man in a match because I thought he deserved special praise for how he played, particularly given the context of it. But to, for us to get... The further we got into that game, the more and more we relied on Declan Rice to dig us out and do something special. And he just can't keep doing that. And it's not to say that we didn't have people that could pass, but when collectively it needed to come together, it just didn't. And particularly by that point, by the time Suchek had gone off, 
Lanzini had dropped deeper. I thought Lanzini was good in the first half because he was he was very, very close to Antonio. So he drops deep, that's fine. It was the right thing to do. But so then you're looking for cutting edge from Antonio. You're looking at it from Bowen, who had a crap game, let's be perfectly honest with you. And then the two boys that come on, which is Vlasic and Ben Rama. They have those two have to provide a cutting edge. I mean, you know, I've already said Bowen was crap, but Bowen has got a lot of credit in the bank, really, hasn't he? But as Gio mentioned in the review, should have been taken off. Um, the other two, uh, Antonio scored. The other two, well, I think David Moyes' decision is being made easy for him. But before I tell you and explain any more of that, this video is sponsored by the One Football app. You can download the One Football app by clicking. The link below, literally underneath this screen right here, or the QR code, if if I can find it. I lost the QR code the other day, anyway. The One Football app, apparently, by the way, I've not checked it, is because so, somebody just messaged and said they're running a story about Jesse Lingard. There we go. Um, that he might have already agreed to join West Ham. I don't know. I've not checked it out. But all those West Ham type stories are all put together for you. It takes all the top stories from the newspapers, all the Premier League websites, put them all into one place, delivers them to your phone. And when you say I'm a West Ham fan, it packages them all up and says, there you go. Just after all the West Ham stuff. Best of all, it's free. Use the link below. Um, Vlasic is, is becoming... It's becoming a little bit of an issue, I have to say. And um, whilst I don't believe the story that we went and spent 26, 27 million on him up front, I really, I really don't. I, as I say, I think it was still, it was 18 million with loads of add-ons. It's never, you're never going to get the add-ons because he's just not doing well enough. But it's still a lot of money. It's still an awful lot of money, even though the wages are low and it's just not working out. I'm not prepared to wash my hands of him and I'm pretty sure that David Moyes won't wash his hands of him. But the more I look at it, the more I think Moyes will wash his hands of Ben Rama. If he can find a way to offload Ben Rama in the summer, then I think he'll do it. Now, I don't think we can afford to. I said this with um, uh, with Diop when I mentioned Diop yesterday. Where, when I did it before. The, sorry. Yeah, it was yesterday's video, wasn't it? Basically about us giving Diop a new contract. And I said, look, we have to. We've got enough. We're going to hemorrhage enough players this summer without worrying about Diop as well. And it's true that we're losing Noble. Crow clearly is not fancy at all. That's another thing to talk about. Fredericks is off. There's load, There's loads of them, right? Yarmolenko's off. We're, we're going to lose a lot of players. Um, we don't need to. We're already chasing a forward, centre-half, um, central midfielder, left-back, left-winger. Last thing we need is to, is to lose another player as well and have another position to fill. Um, so, But I, I can't quite shift it that Moyes... Moyes may well have a confirmation bias now with um, with Ben Rama, which is Ben Rama would have Ben Rama was awful when he arrived onto the pitch yesterday. I just wonder if David Moyes might have been looking at that, thinking, ah, yeah, there you go. That's exactly what I thought. That's exactly why I don't want him on there. And I I'd, I felt for Ben Rama a little bit because I just think he's a bag of nerves now, actually, and um, and I, I thought he was almost so desperate to do something. And prove himself, he ends up doing nothing. And whilst I, I I have some sympathy for him, even after you've given him the sympathy, you still get back to the fact that he's struggling. And um, if what's going to happen is there's not going to be the environment at West Ham for him to flourish, what do we do? Hang on to him for the next three or four years, just basically turn him around saying, well, this is not the environment for him to flourish, but there's a good player in there. Or do we cut our losses? I, I, sus I suspect... We're going to cut our losses on this player. Um, I really do. I just can't see a way for him to to flourish in David Moyes' team. I really don't. And that was a big opportunity last night. That opportunity was for someone to, to come on, be it Vlasic or be it Ben Rama, whoever it may have been, actually grab the game. Grab the game. Just say, look, there's no spark. There's no creativity here. I'm going to dribble past, past a couple of players. I'm going to score a goal. As I say, one of those two players, they, that really was a really good opportunity to do that. And they just couldn't do it. And it wasn't just them. It was because the team, the rest of the other players, had done quite badly in that game. They needed a lift. So that's what substitutes do, right? Substitutes, you bring them on and they improve your team. It's just ours just didn't. So it boiled down to the same old, same old. Poor old Declan. Um, trying to dig us out of a hole again. Um, as I say, not doom and gloom though. I'm not doom and gloom with it. I, I you know, that's a bit gutting what happened, but I'll get over it. We'll get over it because there's bigger fish to fry. Bit daunting facing Liverpool, but even with a Liverpool back, Liverpool game has still got 
wires fixed on on Sevilla. Um, as I say, I'm not ruling it out yet. I'm really not. Um, but I think I think for that game, Moyes already knows his team. I really do. And, it, and they needed to do something. Then the, the two substitutes need to come on and do so. I don't think Vlasic was ever forcing his way into Moyes' team. I think Ben Rama, if Ben Rama had, had arrived onto the pitch, done something, scored a goal, I think he might have got in for Liverpool and he'd played well against Liverpool, might have got in for Sevilla, but that, that's it. I think it's done now. I think David Moyes has got his team. The only thing I'm worried about, though, no, is that Cresswell is part of that team. Because I tell you what, without him, and without him as an attacking threat, we basically, we had no we had no balance. We had no one kicking the ball and attacking. We had no left footer on the left-hand side. Um, fingers crossed, we're going to need him. 